YOLO, people of positions of so-called power. Today I want to talk to you guys about getting profiled by individuals that wield some sort of power over your life. It might be something really minuscule from someone at the register to something serious like a police officer, a judge, uh, a principal, someone that, that can actually make a change positive or negative in, in your life, right? And me, myself, I am no stranger to getting profiled. I've been profiled since I was a little kid. So one of, some of my first memories are of me getting profiled, believe it or not. And I'm white, I'm Caucasian, I'm Armenian. I grew up in Hollywood and East Hollywood was uh, was a hood as far as neighborhoods are concerned and, and I grew up in the heart of the hood in a sense and because of that being being a boy and then a teen and then a man there's certain shit you go through in life man and I've had people ask me why I'm so good at arguing um and the only answer I can give is that I've had to... Because I was never a victim, right? Even though I, I was profiled, even though I got the short end of the stick so many times, I was not a pushover, man. Um, I learned that I can put people in their place using words. And I became very proficient at using my words to tell people they're a piece of shit and tell them what they're doing wrong. And I'm capable of doing it in a lot of different ways. And that's a talent of mine that I had to develop to survive. And the reason why I'm telling you this story is because just recently, man, I had to deal with some shit with US Bank. So I have checking accounts or debit cards with US Bank and I've had it for a while. A good while years right prior to that I was also banking with Bank of America and there's a reason why I'm telling you these two the names of these two banks but the recent situation I had is so I had two three checking accounts with US Bank and I had placed my wife as a joint user on that account we both had our own debit card and my wife is from Russia, so she has a social security number. Uh, she had to give all this information. They took color photo IDs of um, her IDs. They took uh, copies of her IDs and her passport and her social and every everything else at the branch. I was there with her and. Um, now, mind you, I was also born in the USSR, but I came here like 91. I was pretty much a fucking little kid. I don't remember none of that shit. So my birth certificate is USSR, but I'm an American. Don't get it fucking twisted. I grew up here. This is what I know. Um, this is where home is, right? Now, it turns out, U.S. Bank has this branch. It's called it's called the Customer Outreach Department. Well, this Customer Outreach Department de decided to request verification of my wife's credentials or, or who she is, her, her IDs, which neither I received and neither she received. And they just decided that they're going to close this account down. So I hadn't really realized this account was closed because my wife wasn't using it and I would use it rarely. I, I remember I put like a hundred bucks in there or something and then I remember I tried using it to buy like a Red Bull and it didn't go through and I thought okay maybe you know I had just put in the money and you know whatever. So and then maybe a month and a half passes by I tried using it for some other fucking little little trinket and it denied me and I automatically assumed 
okay, they probably went to like fraud department. You know, there's probably some type of fucking fraud alert. <clears throat> so they probably put it on hold or something. So I went on the US bank app and that account was completely MIA, it's missing. So my assumption was that uh, the account got hacked and they must have closed it down or something. Um, I'm just not aware, right? Um, I don't have any voice messages of them calling me, none of this stuff. So when I call the customer outreach, they're like, yeah, we're requesting certain information from your wife to tur turn your account back on. And I was like, okay, is this like fraud department? And they're like, no, we're not the fraud department. We're customer outreach. Like, okay, what does that mean? That means we deal with the customers directly. And they're not really giving a description of what the hell they do. I still didn't get what the hell they do. But by the end of this phone call, man, I, I gave this woman fucking hell, bro. Uh, I gave this woman hell. So I, I, I three-wayed my wife. I was like, just verify your information. She did. And they're like, okay, it's going to take like 72 hours to you know return on your account and i'm being sarcastic on the phone on three-way i'm like listen love you know um they want you to verify your information in case you're not related to putin or some shit you know and you know my wife laughs and i laugh and that lady didn't find it funny and after we're done i was like okay cool um, i still have some stuff to talk to with this lady you have a good day bye to the wife now I'm talking to this lady and I'm like, all right, listen, I, I, I don't like what's going on here. I was like, why did my account get flagged? Why are you asking for my wife's information, but not my information? She's like, well, we have a legal obligation. When you signed your contract, you also agreed to uh, turn in any paperwork we, we request from you, like verifying your ID and, and Whoop -de -whoop, right i'm like okay so does this have anything to do at all with my wife being from russia because i've had this account for years and years and i've never had to go through this but suddenly you guys are asking for my wife's information she's like no this has nothing nothing to do with your wife being from russia i was like okay so why aren't you guys asking for my information why is it only her I like it's randomly we just randomly pick people on this 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 um i don't know why this particular account i was like okay so this is the problem i'm facing you know i was like not only did you guys uh i was like i started off with listen so do you, do you at least acknowledge the fact that i uh in good faith tried to turn in any documents that you asked because i just got my wife on the phone she she gave you all the information to verify so we can agree that um i tried to fulfill my obligation right uh, as your customer she's like no not really i was like okay so can you at least agree on the fact that i in good faith tried to fulfill my thing of, of being a customer she didn't answer the question i was like okay so i see where this is going i was like here's a real problem and i want you to hear me out on this I was like, I'm Armenian, all right, man? Like, I, when I was banking with Bank of America, I didn't tell her it was Bank of America, but I was like, when I was banking with Bank of America, if I called the bank just to see how much money I had in my account, these motherfuckers would ask me like 20 fucking questions, man. I'm talking about literally full social. When was the last time you used the card? Where? What was the amount? Date of birth? your address your your current address right your past address has your telephone number changed it came to a point where like whenever i would call i'd be like listen dude i know you're gonna give me, give me like fucking 21 questions right now so here's my name last name date of birth my full social help me out bro i'm not gonna answer any more questions and they would go on with fucking asking me all these questions it would make me vivid dude but the funny thing is my neighbor next door who didn't speak fucking English that had a completely different last name from a different region of the world. I used to help him with his banking, his checking account. When I would call 
And it's happened where I called mine and then I went next door to call his since I was on the phone taking care of bank shit. And when I would hang up and call with his, they'd be like, hi, name, last four of social, date of birth. What can we help you with? And it used to make me vid, like just livid that I was like, what the fuck, bro? Why am I answering 20 questions to just see how much money I have in my account, right? And I was like, this is what I'm, is this what I'm dealing with over here? Because technically you guys should have fucking uh, called me and notified me that there's a problem with my account. You're requesting information. Not only did you freeze the account, but you erased the account with money on the account. And you didn't even bother to send me a check or to notify me of any changes to my account. So what's really going on here? What, what what's the actual problem? Like, what, why are, why aren't you guys fulfilling your side of the bargain, right? And she's like, "Well, we've sent a check out." I was like, "Well, I have not received a check. You need to cancel that check and resend out a check." I was like, "Better yet, instead of that, why don't you just transfer my money from my one account to my other account? Why do I even have to wait?" They're like, no, it doesn't work that way. You have to wait 72 hours for the information to be verified. And then we'll blah, blah, blah. So we can wait the 72 hours or seven to nine days for the check. <laughs> I started laughing. I was like, of course, I'm going to pick the 72 hours. But after this is resolved, how can you assure me that I'm not going to get randomly picked again a week from now? Because is this like randomly picked like how uh, Muslims get randomly picked at the airport for, for a search? Are we talking about that type of randomly picked? Because what kind of randomly picked are we talking about? Because I haven't been picked and I've been banking with you for over a decade, right? And she's like, well, I can't answer that, man. I was like, so what can you answer, dude? Like, well now i'm pretty much just fucking your time so um obviously i i've got you pretty angry and because she did get pretty angry um and she said nothing of value she said nothing of a surety she said nothing that made any fucking sense and i know what has to do with my wife being from russia and uh, I was like, thank you for your time anyway. At the end, I'm always polite. Thank you for your time anyway. Thank you for listening to my complaint. You have a nice day. Bye. Even though I know I fucked up the rest of her day because I was that one customer on the fucking phone. But I've been a victim and I don't want to call myself a victim because I'm not a fucking victim. I've never been a victim. But I've been on the short end of the stick of people trying to victimize me by just profiling me, right? The amount of times I would get pulled over for who I was or what I look like, right? Like, I have a sister. In all her life, she's been stopped one time by the police for speeding. And they even gave her a break and, and wrote 70 and a 65, okay? And I'm talking about she would drive a bright red Mustang convertible, okay? The amount of times I would get pulled over, there was times I would get pulled over five times in seven days. Just crazy, man. You know, you, you can be from the same household and go through completely different experiences in life, man. It's fucking wild. And when it comes to people trying to profile you, if you really have never been profiled, you can... You have an inkling, but you're not fully sure. Because when you're really profiled, man, people will fucking are dicks. People of power, they'll, they'll straight say rude ass comments, you know? Like, how'd you get here? Like, I've had a cop tell me, how'd you get here? What do you mean, driving, bro? No, like, how'd you come to this country? I was like, what do you mean? How did I like? He goes, how'd you, how you, how'd you get jumped? You, you got jumped in? And I heard like you jumped in, but he said like 
you got jumped in like as if it's a fucking street gang to join the United States as a citizen, you know? And I told him, listen, you ignorant motherfucker. I was like, obviously you went to public school in the United States and you don't know your fucking geography. I came here by a 13 hour plane fucking ride. I didn't have to swim, run or jump a fucking border to get here, bro. And he kind of like froze up because he wasn't expecting that type of answer. And his partner was fucking laughing at my response. And I'll, I'll be a dick like that to people that are being dicks to me, man. And when you're really profiled, they'll fucking ask you questions like, dude, where are you from? Like, what do you mean, where am I from? Dude, aren't, aren't you a police officer? Yeah, so are you gangbanging on me? Like, what do you mean, where am I fucking from? Yeah, well, well, what what gang are you with? The fuck are you smoking, bro? Well, what gang are you looking for? How about that? What gang do you belong to? How about, how about you lift up your ankles? How about you unroll your sleeves? Let me see what fucking tattoos you have, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I'm not taking that shit. Like, the fuck? Where am I from? Dude, well, I, I think we're having a miscommunication here, bro. Like, I think you need to call your sergeant because the reason you pulled me over um, is obviously to find out where I'm from. You know, and they'll ask you good questions. Where do you where where are you coming from? Where are you going? Like the bro, the only only place I've ever had a, a police officer or police officers consistently ask me. I've had police officers ask me where I'm coming from, but I've never had police officers ask me where I'm going. Like the fuck is it to you? Where? Which way? Why? Where? Like. I'm going from A to fucking B, bro. I'm going from this street to that street. You know, I'm not going to give them direct fucking answers. You're being a dick, you know? And I'll tell them, hey, man, like, you're kind of being a dick, bro. Maybe it's time you call fucking uh, your sergeant, bro. And by the way, is your fucking uh, camera on? Yeah, why? Because I want your camera on, man. <laughs> you know? for my safety and yours you know and most of them are always fucking scared they're scared as fuck and i've had to tell officers like hey dude you're, you're coming off really fucking aggressive and in all honesty you seem really scared okay take it down a few notches because you're the one with the fucking cannon on your side and with the reach of your fucking hand you literally have a small military force to back you up, including helicopters and fucking machines and all kinds of people to come to your rescue, bro. I'm the one getting pulled over by you, right? Like, I should be afraid of you, so why don't you fucking tone it down, man? Like, look, you want to start this over? Say hello? How's your day? Ask me for my ID. Tell me what I did. And we move on from there. And I'd appreciate you fucking taking your hand off your fucking gun. When you're, when you're talking to me. You know? Because they rest their hand on their gun. Like, dude, I'm inside the fucking car. You're, you're like talking to me three feet away from my fucking window. Take your hand off the fucking gun, bro. Both my hands are on the wheel. I'm sure you can reach for it faster than I could reach for anything in the fucking car. So calm your ass down dude right like fucking call a call him man call him out on it call him out on it but there's a very um critical thing you have to do when you get into verbal confrontations that, that are starting to get um hostile you have to ensure your hands are in a safe place and they're not moving from that place you have to understand police officers are trained that there are only two things that can kill them the left hand and the right hand and they are very keen on what the fuck you're doing with your hands you can talk all the shit you want do not move your hands from the fucking steering wheel 
Just go ham on them. Fuck you, man. Fuck the police. You fucking Porky the Pig motherfucker. whoop de whoop de woo You know, like, whatever you want to say, bro. But make sure your hands are on the fucking wheel and gripping it fucking tight. Don't talk with your hands. Don't reach. Don't hide your hand. Don't put them down, up. Right? Then you have some type of a thing of, like, you know, they can't really do much about it. They can ask you to step out. And you can tell them, I don't agree with it, but I'm going to step out because a police officer is telling me to step out. That doesn't mean you. I'm giving you the right to search me or the vehicle. I'm going to step out just to make you comfortable. You're taking me out of my space into your space. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm going to step out here in my hands. Uh, boom, you know, and you do it and you still talk your shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or you could tell them to shut the fuck up, go back to the car and call for backup, you know? Um, I don't feel safe. You're, you're a dude with a gun next to me and this is getting hostile and I want someone that's a superior above you uh, with a higher pay grade to uh, come and talk to me because uh, the tone in your voice is telling me this might go hostile. And um, do us both a favor and call for backup. Skip. You guys have a nice day, man. This is me bitching about uh, getting profiled in so many different fucking ways. You guys have a nice day. Yolo, solo, bolo, peace.